Hello, and welcome to this week's One Ocean Response Room Briefing, giving you the top lines of legacy and social media analysis or the period of August 24th to September 6th. I'm Travis, your flotilla coordinator. So analysis of legacy and social media for the past two weeks shows us that not much has changed in the communications landscape at the intersection of the ocean, environment, and COVID-19. Content remains consistent in volume, but is fragmented in topic. Discussion of how to incorporate climate and environmental protection into economic recovery continues to be a strong theme, although interestingly now appears to be mainstream political rhetoric with limited evidence of decoupling of people on the planet. There are some examples of such rhetoric shifting to tangible action, but evidence of action is limited relative to words, and this will be addressed in our recommendations. Exploration of, of the environmental impacts of COVID-19, both the positive and the negative, continues at a low level. Ocean-specific coverage tended to focus on ocean pollution through some coverage of the Mauritius oil spill, a report on denim microfibers in the Arctic Ocean, and some coverage of microplastics. Coverage of PPE as a pollutant appears to have reached the end of its trajectory or to be experiencing a temporary lull. Content at the ocean COVID-19 intersection was low. On social media, data was also fragmented in nature with low level continuation of previous themes, such as the appreciation for the environment and the impact of COVID-19. Ocean images continue to be shared extensively on Instagram with reference to missing the ocean or appreciating nature. An article on the environmental improvements in Hananua Bay during lockdown performed particularly well. So for a more detailed analysis of these topics and more, and for communication recommendations based on this week's findings, please refer to the full One Ocean Response Briefing in your email or contact me to join the flotilla. Until next time.